So let's write out some equations that we can use uh, to predict the performance of heat exchangers. Again, keeping in mind, we're going to be using concepts from convection, from internal flow, uh, and the energy balance for internal flow. OK, so if we draw our control volume, as I've drawn here with uh, the blue dotted line, we have to keep inventory of what's going in and what's going out. So going in, we have hot fluid. We have cold fluid. Going out, we have uh, cold fluid and hot fluid. Um, so we need to uh, do the, the full energy balance on this. So each of these is going to have its own flow stream. So we would say uh, Q dot. So Q dot is essentially the heat that's transferring from, from the hot down to the cold. So Q dot is going to be equal to um, M dot uh, H times the specific heat of the hot fluid uh, times th in minus th out. Right? It's obvious, just an energy balance. If this is assuming incompressible, right? Uh, because C times T would be equal to the enthalpy. So otherwise, it would just be M dot times the diff difference in enthalpies. OK, so likewise, we can say Q dot is equal to M dot C C C times T C out minus T C in. And we have the same heat transfer. This is the same Q in both cases. So you're losing heat from the hot. It's going directly to the cold. It's the same Q. OK, so we have um, some stuff that we know. Usually, we're going to know, let's say, the hot inlet and the cold inlet. But then we don't necessarily know what's, what's the cold outlet, what's the hot outlet, and what is this Q. So we have two equations, and we have basically three unknowns. Two equations and three unknowns. So what do we do with that? Well, we need some way of um, assessing, let's say, the, the size or the, um, the ability of the heat exchanger to transfer heat from stream A to stream B. So we have to do like further analysis based on that. Let me just make this, this little bookkeeping note. So this stuff here, this m dot c c c, this is something we call a capacitance rate. So that would be c dot c here, or up here it's uh, c dot H, we call this the capacitance rate, just the product of the mass flow and the specific heat. So it's just a way of saying, like, this is how much energy this stream can carry per unit temperature. Um, OK, so let's see. Uh, I mentioned we're missing an equation, right? So we need to have some performance estimate. Um, the way that we did get to that is usually something called um, conductance. Conductance. So conductance is equal to um, 1 over the total resistance. And we normally call that something called UA. UA. So somebody says conductance, what they say is what they mean is UA. And what that means is it's 1 over the total resistance in series. So doing this analysis, what it actually would look like is our total is going to be the resistance from, uh, resistance from going from one fluid to another fluid. It has to include everything in there. So what would, what would be in there? Well, you'd start with saying uh, there's going to be a convection resistance, our convection, let's say on the hot side. Um, there's also going to be maybe a uh, fouling resistance. Like there's, the presence of buildup of material. So normally, um, not just the convection, not just conduction through the material, but a following resistance as well. So we'd say R, F uh, on the hot side. Then we have conduction resistance through the wall. We have following resistance on the cold side. And then we have convection on the cold side as well. Um, Following resistance is like contact resistance. So R, F would be usually given to you as like R double prime F. And then you have to divide by the, the surface area of the tube where the interface is in order to get that. So this is our, our total resistance. So if you ever want to just uh, compute the conductance of a heat exchanger, which you'll probably be asked to do at some point, 
Um, you start by doing a resistance network between the two fluids and just account for everything that's in there. Um, some people ask, OK, can following be important? Yes, it can be important. It can be on the order of magnitude of the conduction uh, or the convection resistances. So it can be important. Um, yeah, I guess, so what I wanted to say about this was um, it's, it can become difficult to like establish all of this stuff, do the full analysis, and get back something. Say like you have fluid flow over a bank of tubes like this. Or maybe you even have fluid flow in this direction. This situation is neither external flow nor internal flow. It's a combination of the two. So you, even in the situation where you could go take a convection correlation, plug it in for our convection H or our convection C, it can be like prohibitively difficult to figure out what those resistances are. And you sometimes have to just go to experimental to get the, to get the conductance. Um, so we could do that. I could show you how to um, go into ease. So, let's see. so if we go into ease uh, and you go to the function information, there's in the drop down menu for heat transfer and fluid flow, there's um, two options for heat exchangers. So compact heat exchangers, and then there's <coughs> also just plain heat exchangers. So first, let's look at the, the heat exchangers. What this will give you is a list of uh, different um, methods for establishing what we'll talk about uh, next time, which is number of transfer units and effectiveness. So it gives you relationships. These ultimately relate back to the conductance in some way. So if you compute conductance, you can get to NTU and so on. Um, so it gives you these relationships, and it'll give you them for, I wish it could make it bigger, but this is for parallel flow. You can flip through, and you can see, or sorry, this is parallel flow. This was counter flow. Um, there's uh, cross flow, both fluids unmixed. Cross flow one, unmixed. Here's our shell and tube heat exchanger. Here's a shell and tube in series, and you can go to n of them um, with this. So you can have those relationships. There's also a regenerator model, if you ever want to do a regenerator model. Um, that's there. It's a numerical solution, uh, so it takes a little bit of time. but. OK, so that's there. If we look at the compact heat exchangers, this is where you're going to get um, specific <coughs> conductance relationships. So if we look down here, it's, again, really hard to see. What's coming out of this are um, parameters that's, that are going to help us is, uh, estimate the performance, right? the conductance of this. So you have flow. You have these, what, pin, flate, pin fin, plate, fin uh, heat exchangers. You can kind of flip through and see there's different geometries. Uh, these kind of correspond to stuff you might have commercially available. So pl uh, strip fin, plate fin, so on. All these different geometry versions here. Um, so there's just a lot of stuff here. But eventually, if it's complicated enough, you probably want to go to something like this. Um, so back to this, let's see. Uh, yeah, so this is just saying that there's correlations that exist. So this is one example. This uh, cross-flow heat exchanger has a correlation in terms of Reynolds number. Um, the Colburn, it gives you back these Colburn J factors, which you can, um, I won't talk about it, but you can go into the book and look, and there's a relationship that you can use to, to model the heat transfer for that particular type of heat exchanger. So those, those things exist, so kind of all I'll say about it. Um, OK, in the last five minutes, let's get a start on uh, some of the analysis part of this. So if we want to then develop like mathematical expressions for heat exchanger performance, again, we have our energy balances. This stuff is simple, easy, easy to understand. The harder part is figuring out that third equation, the conductance equation. You can go through the resistance modeling, but I think it's good to maybe go through an example and see how it's actually done um, so, so we can you know, have a clearer idea. So the way we want to approach this is, we're going to take our heat exchanger. Let's say we're looking at a, a cross-flow heat or a counter-flow heat exchanger. And we're going to model um, the temperature as a function of position here. So what we want to do is uh, do a control volume on this system and then develop our expressions for that. But really what we have is like two separate flows that we want to account for. Um, so we need a, a control volume that's basically a coupled control volume. So let me just draw this a little bit bigger down here. So I have. 
uh, flow like this, flow like this, and I'm going to do a control volume here um, that is located at the same position x. So this is b at position x. This is dx. Um, but it's separated, right? There's kind of this um, double control volume here. So we're looking at what's happening on the cold side and the hot side and relating them to each other. Um, so we can do our usual uh, balance, and we'd say what's coming in here would be m dot c i c, where i again is enthalpy. Um, I'm sorry, let's just flip it out. So we had cold going to the left. So then we have coming in m dot c um, i c at x plus dx. On the hot side, in the other direction, we have, oops, sorry, we have m dot h i h. And then going out, we have m dot h i h at x plus dx. And then we have one other thing here, assuming this is steady state, uh, we have heat flow between these two things. So when you draw, I guess the important thing is here, we, we draw this arrow from one to the other. Right, we're going to call this some dq, some differential amount of heat. So this heat has to be leaving the hot, and it has to be entering the cold in the energy balance. Otherwise, it gets messed up. So you draw it in one way, and it has to you know, flip for the other. Um, so let's see. We can go through and write out some equations here. So let's start for the hot fluid. Uh, for the hot fluid, we have uh, m dot h i h at x um, is equal to, expanding out that term, it's again m dot h i h at x plus d dx, m dot h i h times dx uh, plus, sorry, plus d q dot. So here we had on our hot fluid, I guess, uh, going out plus dq. Um, so we can cancel out some terms. Now this cancels with this. And we end up with 0 is equal to m dot h uh, d i h dx times dx plus dq dot. Uh, let's see, what can we do here? So we can say it's incompressible. Um, substitute in uh, C times T, and then solving for DQ. So DQ dot is equal to um, M dot times C is going to be uh, C dot H DTH DX DX. So that's the hot fluid. Um, if you give me 20 more seconds, I'll do the cold fluid. So cold is the same analysis, but we end up with dq dot is equal to minus c dot c dtc dx dx. So this will let us set up a set of equations that we can then solve and get our q dot.